Hey everybody and welcome back. I've got some more R7 content for you guys. Now I've had a few people reach out and they've expressed one, they want to know what my overall thoughts are about using the raw files from the R7. And also they wanted to see what the shadow recovery flexibility of the raw files are. So the best thing is going to be to just jump into my MacBook and let's play with the raw files. Alright guys, so all of this stuff is shot on the R7. We've got a bunch of different ISO values. You guys might have seen the high ISO test that we ran really early on when we got the camera, and these are the images from it. So here we've got ISO 200. Let's go to, let's say, 3200. Because that's about where things start to present noise, right? So let's go ahead and open it up into Camera Raw. And let's check it out. So, people like to see this at 100%, right? So let's go to 100%, and let's see what's going on here. So let's get Yoshi's face in there, let's get some black in there, and let's show you what's going on. So first off, let's uh, recover the shadows. We'll bring them up. Remember, we're shooting at ISO 3200 here, and I've now recovered up to 60%. Okay, we're a little past 100. Oh, let me bring it back to 100 for you. We'll stay at 100 most of the time for you guys. So, you know, straight out of camera, we've got this. If we wanted to pull those shadows up, you know, there's a little bit of noise in there. But overall, I wouldn't say it's really adding a lot of noise from the shadow recovery. Let's see what it looks like at a lower ISO. Okay, so let's cancel that. And let's go back and let's take a look at what it looks like at ISO 200. So let's go to open it up in Camera Raw again. Let's go to 100% again. And let's see what we got going on. So now we've got a clean image, right? This is something more like maybe what I would shoot if I was using flash and doing some macro photography where I'm not going crazy with the ISO on purpose. So if I was to recover the shadows here, look at how clean that is. Pulling it up, we're at 65, we're at 75, and I mean, hey, let's zoom right in. It's really not that bad, guys. Like, honestly, I think the shadow recovery is pretty phenomenal out of these files, and it's all 100%. Now, granted, we're at ISO 200, where there's not a lot of noise, still, this is much better than what my M50 used to be able to do, I can tell you that for sure. Okay guys, here's a good example. We've got my baby sushi cat at ISO 6400, and the lighting in my room is really bad, so it usually makes images look really terrible. So let's check it out. Let's open it up. Camera raw. Let's zoom to 100. Okay. And as you can see, ISO 6400 looks pretty good. Now, if we wanted to just flex the shadows, let's pull those shadows up. All right, so you can see some noise is presented there. I mean, we're shooting at ISO 6400. I've recovered up to 40. Let's go up to 50. Let's go up to 60, okay? And obviously I wouldn't want to recover the shadow in this image. I would probably just leave it right where it's at. It doesn't really look like it needs to be recovered here, maybe a little bit. But overall, I noticed that you can recover shadows better, especially in comparison to what I used to have, the M50, which was the latest camera that I owned that was an APS-C sensor. But I would say the shadow recovery is on par with my RP, maybe a little bit behind my R6, but not that far behind it. And like I said, shooting inside in low light environments with an APS-C sensor at ISO 6400, that's pretty awesome. All right, guys, let's jump into some of the macro shots here. Let's see what we got. These are all low ISO. Speed's pretty cool though. We're still at ISO 400. All right, here we go. We're up in the thousands, 2,500. Let's find a decent one. Okay, here we go, ISO 5000. So let's open it up. And let's zoom to 100%. Okay. And as you can see, ISO 5000, you've got a decent amount of noise there, but I do still think that this is a usable image. Now, I use Topaz Denoise AI to denoise my images. I know some people aren't happy about that decision. It's what I do. I think a lot of photographers use it. I think if you're willing to use it, you're gonna have totally usable images at ISO values that are even higher than this. But as you can see, ISO 5000, you're dealing with a decent amount of noise here. 
if I wanted to kind of like, you know, add some contrast and maybe pull the shadows up a little bit. You know, this is what you're going to be dealing with, but you can totally denoise and get this to be a usable image. So let's check that out. Let's go ahead and hit open. That's going to pull us into Photoshop. So again, you know, we're dealing with some noise here. It's not really terrible if you ask me, but we're going to go to filter. We're going to go to Topaz Labs and we're going to go to denoise AI. And let's just run it through some really low level denoising here. Okay, because I do find that this software is really aggressive and you want to tone that back. So I'm going to go to low light. I'm gonna set it to, let's do remove noise at, let's do 20, because there is a decent amount of noise in here. Now, as you can see, does a pretty nice job of cleaning up that shot. Okay, and then we can hit apply. And let's see what it looks like after we denoise it. So let's go back to 100%. Let's take a look at what it looked like. All right, so this is my point here. So once we're getting into ISO values around this area, 6,400, 5,000, this is where I kind of feel like I'm starting to hit the same wall as where I used to hit with my Canon M50 at ISO 800. And that's where, yes, the images are usable at higher ISOs than that, but this is where the level of noise starts to add some degradation when you're starting to treat it with denoise software like this. So while they are still totally usable images, and while I could have adjusted the AI to probably denoise better than this, I just tried to do it quickly for you guys. What I'm trying to point out here is I do believe that ISO 6400 is probably the wall where you don't really want to push above it. Can you push above it? Can you use those images? Absolutely. I'm just saying that that's where, you know, the noise levels start to become slightly uncomfortable. That's it. That's all I'm saying. Overall, I think that, you know, there's a really big leap in high ISO performance from the Canon R7 sensor in terms of older APS-C sensors that have been put out by Canon. And I also think that the overall flexibility of the recovery of shadows is also better. So let's see what else we got here. Let's check it out. So this guy's cool. All right, ISO 4000. Let's just check it out. I just want to show you guys different pictures. I want to show you, you know, different lighting scenarios because the light was constantly shifting here. So you know how it goes, darker images, you see more noise. Lighter images, you might not. This is ISO 4000 at 100%. Okay, again, a little bit of noise, but this is nothing that isn't dealable with. So I'd be happy with this. Now, let's say I wanted to flex the shadows. So overall, decent performance at ISO 4000. Okay, guys, so let's take a look at a little bit of a darker image. This was shot at ISO 12,800. And we're gonna do some shadow recovery and show you what to expect. So let's hit open in camera raw. Let's bring it to 100%. Let's make sure we see some of the black in here so that you can really see what's going on. Now again, we're shooting at ISO 12,800, which is crazy with an APS-C sensor. And we're in kind of a dark scenario. So yes, there's quite a bit of noise already here. But let's go ahead and recover the shadows here. And we can pull those shadows right up and it basically falls completely apart at ISO 12,000. So you're not going to be able to expect a whole lot of shadow recovery if you're shooting at that high of an ISO value. But let's do the same thing with lower ISO values. So let's check it out at say 6400 where I tend to think noise is where it really starts to get a little bit uncomfortable but still usable. So let's open this up. And let's zoom to 100. Try to frame it up kind of the same for you. And let's do it again. Shadow recovery, let's bring it up. Okay, so we're at 35. I wouldn't say it's adding noise, but I would definitely say you're seeing the noise that's present there at this point. Bring it up a little more. 56. 65. Again, we're kind of falling apart. Okay, you know, noisy at 64, fair enough. Let's drop it down into something that maybe we would actually be working with. Let's try ISO 800. Let's open that up. Let's zoom into 100. Frame it up. And let's pull those shadows up now. So now that we don't have a crazy noisy image, as you can see, 
the shadow recovery is actually pretty good. 56. We're in the 70s. We're in the 80s. We're starting to add some noise in there, right? Let's, it's probably starting to get noisy-ish around 65. So I do think this is an increase in shadow recoverability in terms of APS-C sensor technology. Now remember, I'm comparing this in my mind to a Canon M50 because that's the last sensor that I had that was an APS-C sensor. So I do think that this is definitely better at shadow recovery than those files were. But I will say it probably is a little bit behind the flexibility of my Canon R6 files. Anyway, guys, I hope that this video helped you out a little bit. If it did, go below, subscribe, and click that notification bell. I'm going to have a ton more Canon R7 content coming your way, so stay tuned.